Hey guys. So Brad and Krista got off just a little bit early. And um, if you guys didn't see Brad and Krista, you should make sure to go check out the rebroadcast. Um, we're Dirt Patch Heaven. And for those of you who can't figure out how to chat with us, it's because our stream for our internet is really slow. We've been trying to use other programs. We've been trying to figure out how to get them set up. And they are really, really glitchy. And um, because of that, the Google Hangout works out better for us. But you do have to go to um, you do have to go to the link with the G+. So anybody out there who has figured out what the link is for the live broadcast, if you can put it in your comments on YouTube so people can exactly. click it and go. And thank you to those of you last night. We tried to come up with a stream that had a chat box, and we got the chat box to work beautifully, but we couldn't get the stream to stay. So yeah, thanks for all of your help with that. It was you all are really awesome. So. Okay, so I'm going to make sure we have the ability to put up our Q&As. I'm going to type a question here for those of you who are here. And um, let's see if we can get it to come up. <laughs> it's gonna start Sometimes it just takes a little minute for me to get everything up. So right. I'm sorry for the wait. And now I didn't go get Botox or lip injections. I am having a reaction to the food that I had at my aunt's funeral while we were in Wyoming. So, so she looks like lip tonic. So I look a little bit puffy today. <laughs> So there we go. I'm going to put that up, and usually that works out. So again, if you have questions, please make sure to type them in so that we can see them. And add me to your G Plus account, and that way whenever I have a live event coming up, it just pops up. So um, first off, we wanted to give a little bit of a, uh, not a speed up, uh, an update. Update, okay. We wanted to give a little bit of an update on what's going on. A lot of people have still been asking about, do you need to sell your farm? In fact, uh, where I was over the weekend was I was in Pinedale, Wyoming for a family reunion slash funeral. Uh, my aunt passed away two, maybe three months ago, and we, she wanted to be cremated, and so we waited till everybody could get together, and we went up and had a memorial service up there, and so that's where I was. And um, it was a beautiful area. It was a really pretty area. It was really beautiful. Uh, John wasn't able to go, and the reason is because I had to work. He had so. to work. So he is back to work at his original job, but he's part time. Yeah. Did you want to tell him how it changed, or can we even do that? I don't know. For no, we can, to, no, can we, we can. say where you work? I don't know. No, let's, let's avoid that. But uh, most everybody who's been on the channel knows what, what I do for a living. Um, and so they found a part-time position for me. Uh, it varies now. The hours are variable, which means I started a little bit earlier in the morning, most mornings. And now I get a day off during the week, but I have to work Saturdays. And so it does um, change weekend events a little bit. So Hey, go for Green Living. Off did I find, Nation, hey, Off Green Nation, yes, yeah, she did find so. the chat, thank you. In April, finally found it, I'm not very familiar with Hangouts, so it took me a good bit to find it. Condolences on your loss. Well, it was very sad at the time, and it was kind of strange because uh, it was so exciting to see all of our family up in yeah. where my, my grandfather had started a hunting lodge up in that area. He was really, really kind of, at, at a certain point, kind of a, cornerstone of the of the community and my grandma was definitely the keystone of the community I mean she was amazing and so to have all of our family I hadn't been up there for 16 years and so it was really amazing to go up there was still a lot of crying and a lot of tears and by the time I came home I my eyes were bloodshot shot it was hard to drive home but um, let's see Big Bear Homestead you did oh, find hey, the chat. Big Bear Homestead I Oh, that's right. We were good. Okay, I was like, did I remember to call you back? But I did. I did remember to call you back. Big Bear Homestead is on on Fridays. Is that right? And then Off Grid Nation here, you guys that are in the chat. Hi, he Tommy. Is Tommy, but he's the one after us. Yes. So he's the hour right after us. Um, is Mr. Dirt wearing we're the new Hugh 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 Hefner. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. He likes the big. I do. Culture. This this is like airy and breathy, and we have a heat wave coming. And it's only about three sizes too big. For yes, him. and so I am happy to have that um, extra airflow. Right. <laughs> we'll um, stop there. 
So Mr. Dirt is working part time, which is a huge blessing. It, it means that we have insurance and maybe he won't always be working there. But for now, where he has been hurt, it's really nice to have that coverage. Um, it just gives us a little bit of peace of mind right. for, for, for the time being. And, yeah. And at the moment, it, as I ease into it, I think that this is probably about all that I can handle in a day anyway. Another yeah. four hours in a day would just be a little too much. So, Hey, Alicia. Um, and hey, Nifty Thrifty. Okay, so we're, we're also going to talk about the farm a little bit. I know I've said this in our other... Uh, broadcast but if you guys are new and you're and you're still concerned and I went up to I this is something that was really really intense and I wouldn't say embarrassing but I was a little bit a little bit embarrassed was that it turns out that my family my extended family has been watching my videos and I was I my, when, when they that when they asked me about whether or not we were having to sell the farm I'm like how did you know I mean not that work doesn't get through in family and everything but they're like well we've been watching your videos and I'm like <gasps> Oh, <laughs> oh it's kind of something to have like an uncle or an aunt or a cousin that you really respect to actually be watching your work. And, and so it, it was, I felt a little bit flustered. I probably talked too much because I was a little flustered, but mm -hmm. so the, so the, the long and the short of it is as far as finances go between the Etsy store, the YouTube channel and the Patreon and John working part time, uh, we can keep the farm as far as the mortgage goes. Are if if we were able to kind of explain our mentality a little bit, we really don't want to have a mortgage. Right. Our original goal had been: we love Dave Ramsey, we love the envelope system. We're out of debt except for our mortgage, and yet a mortgage is big enough that's a little tricky to pay it off quickly. And so for us, well, plus our mo seems to be you know stay as far away from. The system as possible and you know part of the mortgage I mean that's kind of our big that's our big chain that's holding us to it I mean it holds us to a, a job or having to make an, a regular income and so if we would have realized this or uh, made sure that we had brought that idea to the forefront sooner you know maybe we wouldn't have ended up with this farm we would have ended up with something uh, rather than this house but do you want to talk about what I really wanted to live in when we first you may, yeah you may when as well. we wanted well we were in a 600 square foot house when yeah. we moved here it was a little house but it was plenty big for us um, our problem was that the restrictions in our on our covenants right. were that we could we studied the covenants and it said anything under 50 pounds you could keep what you wanted to keep and so I had a goat that was under 50 pounds I had chickens and ducks and everything mm -hmm. And so we followed the codes, but then people started the, – the the city came in and said, oh, we better realign these codes because people are, are reading right. them and finding out that, the, that they can keep goats. Somebody's learning where they can – And so they came out and they said, no farm animals except for chickens, yeah. and you can only have six chickens. And, and hens, yeah. not even a rooster. And I didn't want to leave our last place. I had grapevines, and I had peach trees and raspberries, and I had – my whole front yard was turning into a vegetable garden. I didn't – want to leave and in comes Mr. Dirt. Well uh, yeah and I was getting into the prepper mentality of oh we've got to get away from people and store hundreds of rounds of ammunition and um, you know we've got to just get away from everywhere and so we've got to get out to the country and have more land. Um, we only had what was that a, not quite it was a little more than a tenth of an acre and I was like no. And most of that was gonna, house. Yeah. At least exactly. half of that and was house. And then concrete took it like half yeah. of the rest. So there was this tiny little strip of lawn around the backyard and the side. And that was getting turned into garden. Yeah. And I, it was turning was out very everything well. everything into garden. <laughs> and yet. Hey, Sand Hollow. Hi, Sand Hollow. Um, Yay. And then we just threw in a fire pit for, you know, good measure. And suddenly there was, you couldn't just tiptoe around everything. So I was like, no, we've got to have more land. And, and that was really hard to leave that. But my, my big dream since I was a kid was I wanted to live in a really tiny house. I wanted to live in a Heidi house, like with my goats and a hayloft in the top. That was really, really what I wanted to live in. I wanted to pay off everything. I wanted to live in a tiny house. And um, and we had some pretty big fights when we, when we, when we left that house because 
Um, we are still not going to move into a house with the goats, no matter what. <laughs> Once I'm in buried in the ground, you know, she can do whatever she wants. But John wanted to have a house with two bathrooms. We yes. have three girls in our family, and so he wanted to have a little bit more of his space. Yes. And the X to Y ratio here is a little skewed. Yeah. Just so everybody knows. And, and so for me, what I was looking for was something really, really tiny. I don't like to be indoors. I don't like to do housework. I'd much rather be outside gardening or hanging with the animals. Or just, I just love to be outside. And so I really wanted a very, very tiny house. If possible, I wanted it to be like a 12 by 24. I wanted it to be really small. And um, at the time, our, our prepping, homesteading, conversations had not come to fruition he right. had seen it as being kind of a hobby of mine but not an income mm -hmm. and because of that his he was the one with the income um, and because he was one with the income of course he needed to have an input on what money was being spent but I mean it was really skewed that way he didn't have the passion for the homesteading but he was bringing in all the money that was going to the homesteading and so he didn't really want to go off off-grid homesteading type thing he he wanted to be close enough to get on the road to get to work and and I didn't want as much property as we bought here we have an acre and a half and what I really wanted was a half acre I wanted something where I could I could grow and plant intensively not um, not feel like I was spread out and and trying to cover too many bases at once and we still have yeah. a continuing discussion on that because you know, my, my thought is just, honey, just don't worry about the land. <laughs> don't worry about the outer rims. We don't have to get those. And I know? just can't let it die. Right. She, I, I cannot well, let it die. OCD. Well, not OCD. <laughs> I just, at this point, I put so much into it with trees and, right. and pastures. I've, I've re, what's the word? I've re, re I've re, uh, rehabilitation. I've rehabilitated the, it was all dead when we got here. It oh, was yeah. all dead. I mean, there'd been horses in here that had been starved, and so they'd actually eaten the topsoil off the ground. Um, and now we have pastures and everything, and I can't let it go. And so back to the point of selling okay. the farm, the point is, is that right now we have an acre and a half with so much abundance right now with food to feed the rabbits. We have so much going on with the swale. We have the big row garden in the front. We have the greenhouse. We have the pastures in the back. And all of that can be harvested to feed every animal and ourselves. And there's not enough of me to go around to harvest it all at this point. Right. That's the same here. We only have one bathroom with three girls. Yeah. yeah. So far, it's, it's not too bad because the girls seem to like to pee outside as much as they like to pee inside. <laughs> right. Was, we trained them it's well. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. So not at all embarrassing when friends grow that, up. Yeah, it's like, honey, could you at least go behind a tree? Right. Um, <laughs> so let's see. What? So as far as like our homestead, what it has come down to is I did a really good job. Mm -hmm. Everybody that comes, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so green. It looks so great. And mm -hmm. and we have more abundance than we can possibly use right now. And we're mm -hmm. in the middle of a high altitude desert. Mm -hmm. I can't harvest it all. And I, if, if I don't do the Etsy store, we can't afford to continue to farm because of the expenses of the farm. And if I don't do the farm, then I don't have anything to make videos about. And so still really what it comes down to in our minds is that if we could sell the place we're in now and find something, a smaller house and also smaller property, then maybe I could keep up. The other option... Now, <laughs> now this is not to say we are still selling. It's... Um, it, it's lots of research at this point, right? It's definitely research and, and looking at which ways we want to go. If we do sell, though, um, understand here's the update if we do sell, it's because we have chosen to, not because we're being it's not a to. financial hardship yeah. at this point, it's the and fact so, that my hands can't. And so, keep up. thank you to all of you guys. You, you know, everybody has just been amazing between Etsy and, and Patreon and the YouTube, Patreon and, YouTube and, and, and you guys are just just incredible. Yeah, um, it, it's been huge and it's been eye-opening and lots of tears and right. and um, and so at this point it's funny be careful what you ask for because you just might get it right <laughs> now the permaculture is taken off so much we have a woofer here um, that we love her to pieces she's been here for three days and sometimes I feel like I have to apologize because I've set my day up to the point where I work in the morning until 10 o'clock in the morning all my farming stuff is done by 10 o'clock in the morning we don't have chores after that right. At that point, I come inside and I do Etsy stuff or I do YouTube stuff. And and I'm looking at her and I'm like, this is what permaculture is supposed to be. It's supposed to make it so that things take care of themselves. You don't have to go out and babysit it. Mm -hmm. 
And so what I'm trying to, more than anything, what I'm trying to teach her is, okay, look, when we think smarter mm -hmm. and, and let the systems feed into each other, then you don't have to work so hard. And, and the reason that it's so hard right now is because I have so many different avenues that we're making money on the Etsy story, the YouTube, the Patreon right. and the farm. Which way do we go at the moment? And <laughs> and I, I'm having to delegate my days up so hard right and we're just adding in the podcast. Now we're doing the Homestead Nation thing or Homestead Network. And so And they're all good, wonderful. They're all things. good and important. Just, and an and important important go? income stream for us. Yeah. But um it does what it has what it's come down to is I don't have time to read stories to the girls at night and that really bothers me. Who oh did they make it on where is Wanda? Did Wanda Deep Charming. South did Deep South Homestead show up? So. That would be exciting if they right. if they actually made it on. Um, and I think we're only getting half of the comments, so sorry guys. We're not seeing it all. It kind of scrolls through funny. Sometimes it scrolls from the bottom, and sometimes it scrolls from the top, and it's hard to know. So along that lines, what I want to talk about today is this new book. Careful, honey. I am. Go ahead. Don't be distracted. Go. I am totally distracted. <laughs> okay. This is a new book, The Lean Farm, and it's by Ben Hartman. And this book is talking about how you, I don't know, if you guys have heard of like the feng shui and the um, clutter-free uh, different books that are around that are telling you, get rid of all the garbage in your house that you don't care about. Get rid of everything that does not bless your home. Get rid of everything that when you touch it, it doesn't give you a spark of joy. So this is the version for your farm. Is that not amazing? That just, whoa. Feng shui gardening. Well, it, it, it kind of is. Right. Kind of. Um, and what it is is they've taken Japanese methods, Toyota, and their methods of um, industrial structuring, made it so that they could compete with the rest of the world because they didn't have the waste stream that the rest of the world had. And so with the Lean Farm, what he's done is he said, this is what you need. Um, oh, Deep South is on YouTube. Gotcha. Thanks, Genesis. Um, and so the point of this is to go through and to find your waste streams, whether your waste stream is clutter around your farm, whether it's not keeping your tools in the greenhouse where you actually use them, um, whether it's having so many tools that you can't find the right tool because you're you have all these old tools that you never use but they're hanging on the same wall as your good tools and so they're a constant distraction. Let's see. Thanks, Thanks for uh, leaving the link. Yeah, Thanks for leaving definitely. the link, Tommy. I really appreciate it. Um, and, and I am sorry, guys, that this is how it's turning out. Right. We did try to use other. We tried to use uh, Wirecast. Well, yeah, we had a program called Wirecast, and Big Bear Homestead uses it on his. Um, but we're using Max, and I don't think that the program is talking to the computers right. So we had we tried it out last night, and so thank you because a lot of you guys I see were on there. Um, thank you so much for your help through that but what we would get was about 20 seconds of a good stream and then it would just cut off and we would be buffering and no it was just a mess so oh, deep south homestead hooray hey guys. yeah the comments are quite a bit different here aren't they did Sorry. you guys fit it did you guys fix uh, f uh figure it oh and it it moves so quickly mm -hmm. um wanda did you did you guys figure out how to use a, a streaming program so that you can do it on is it friday that you're doing it Anyway, okay. okay, yeah, just leave it. It, it uh, Go ahead. No, we're not answering the right. questions. Honey. Stop, I understand. Stop I'm touching <laughs> buttons. We're going we're <laughs> to no, take I'm off. We're going to be taking down the broadcast. ones that we've already read. Um, <laughs> okay, so don't touch anything. I don't want to have to Fix restart this, but it. Don't touch it. I didn't ask you to touch it. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is honestly like a Japanese method of leaning your farm and honestly I have to say the last two years we we did definitely start out with our with a lot of free stuff which meant we mm -hmm. had a lot of junk a lot of stuff they kind of laid around in piles and it wasn't pretty second hand maybe it would work uh, most of the time it would work most of the time it would work I would be able to find a way to make it work and what it mostly what it would teach me is what I didn't want to do again or it would teach me that this material was the better material and by getting rid of all the, um, the, for me it was a lot about time, finding ways to bring my time together so that I could automate it. And one of the ways I did that, which I don't know if you guys have seen the videos, but I took all my old hoses 
that were already kinking up and starting to be nasty and I cut holes in them and I cut short lengths of hose and, and strip it open so it was like a clip over that hole so I was using my old free stuff but I was turning it into a new system there's nothing wrong with having um, piles of useful material there's nothing wrong with having useful material but don't hold on to useful material that you trip over that you have to work around and never going to use and that you have found that you don't use yeah. we, um, we had a wonderful welder that was never going to get you i mean i was like i'll get to around to it someday no we, you know she's really good sold it on craigslist we got 200 and we've never missed it yeah Honestly. You know, and I thought about it that day as I'm loading it up. I'm like, man, I was going to, like, do something with this. But three years later, yeah. it never happened. Yeah. Um, the same thing has gone for all sorts. There's nothing wrong with bringing something onto your property as long as when you see that you don't use it, you get it off your property. Right. Um, it's just I have no taper. idea how these comments are structured. Do I look at the top new ones or at the bottom? I'm just confused. I know, April, I am too. Sometimes they show up at the bottom and sometimes they show up at the top. Oh, that's right. We need we needed to show how Thanks, to Thanks, Helios. The, Appreciate that. Where is Helios? <laughs> He's right Let's there. Let's see. Let tech support do his job and let the talent do her job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. Right. Okay, so I forgot that I was going to do a shout out today and show how to use drop spindle. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um. So you keep talking. David. Somebody had mentioned how excited their daughter was about doing it. It was that Big too. Bear Homestead. Yep. Exactly. And I wrote down her so, name. Where did I so write I'm her glad name you down? Remembered that. Oh no, I feel so bad because she was so excited that I was going to say her name. Oh no. Okay, so this is a this is a drop spindle, and usually before in, in our in our program, I have used. Um, is it on our memos? Ah, Carol Ann. Uh -huh. There we go. Thanks, tech support. Yeah. You think you're funny too? So. I thought you wanted to be tech. Support. I can be tech support. I'm good. Okay. Just so put me in my place. Thing. Here's your drop spindle. Here's your yarn. <laughs> was I putting you in your place? No, Helios was. I love Helios. Right. Okay, so there's my leader that I've attached. I'm gonna put it on the hook. Okay. These ones are spinolution, and so I could add weights into all these little holes, but I don't know if I want to do that. I haven't spun with this tiny one yet. Do you want to get the big one? No. <laughs> I'm going to tip this up a little bit so that my bottom half doesn't look so big. My goodness, it's skewed. Is it skewed? Tell me it's skewed. Oh, sure. Don't you dare say that it's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you first start, you pull down quite a bit so that it will overlap, and then, and then you wrap this around. Otherwise, it'll try to get tangled up in your, um, in your yarn as you're trying to make it. I don't know how much this helps. What I like to do if, I, if I'm if i with the beginner is I like to put on a core uh -huh. so that it gives structural integrity to the yarn. And then you take it off the hook. <laughs> See, Ava's, Ava's got it. She says tech support is smart. Tech so, support is smart. Thank you, Ava, I appreciate it. And you'll that. see on these ones, they have a little groove. Can you, can you see that little groove right there? Right there and right here. The purpose of that is to keep it from spinning off the edge. Was there something else that I missed that you're not laughing at? Not yet. And so that is how you use a drop spindle. And if if you have, I don't know, I've, real, I've done a couple little videos of it, but I need to sit down and do a couple more because especially with this kind of camera, it's a little bit hard to it's a little bit hard to to show it in depth our lighting could be a little bit better right now anyway so that is how you use a drop spindle and pre-drafting is everything having your fiber open before you start is really important so that you're not sitting here fighting with your fighting with your fiber so just in case everybody's curious about this kind of uh, this kind of thing, I can do. I'll just put it out there. If somebody wants their own lesson, any of my consultations, whether it be YouTube or spinning, Skype or we Hangouts? no, not Skype. Oh. Skype doesn't work very well. It has the tendency to glitch out too. Any anything that you guys want to learn how to do that isn't like butchering rabbits, that would be really tricky. Trying butcher rabbits in front of a live stream. 
But for like the spinning and the YouTube consultations and stuff like that, if you want help, just contact me and we can do a private lesson. Yeah. If, if you have a spot where you're really, really stuck and you feel like I'm never getting ahead and why can't I figure this out? Okay, Ava just asked where did it go? Um, is the fiber from your own animals? Uh, I do have fiber from my own animals. This one is a real, you can see the really pretty gray color. This one I'm making specifically for Corinne and I didn't have, I don't have a gray animal. I, well, I guess I do, but it's, it's Angora. And Angora, while it is beautiful and soft and fluffy, it does not make a fine gauge yarn very well um, without some, it, it's just a little bit harder to spin with it and it's not as rugged as, this is a Romney. So it's pretty rugged. Um, it's soft still. It's not scratchy, but Romney is really my favorite fiber to use. Um, if I was to get locks to spin from, or my favorite, um, some of my favorite fiber artists would be like Natalie from Namaste Farms. Mm -hmm. She's really amazing. Her colors, I've never, I've never seen colors like 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 what she can get in her. And, I, and she she, gave, she sent me some Corydale that was so soft, it just about blew my mind. It was amazing. Okay. okay. So there's the gray, and there's the spindle. And these spindles are pretty nice. I do have them. No, I don't think I have them in my Etsy store. I don't think I do. If anybody wants some of these, I can get them in my Etsy store. Yeah, just contact us. Leave a, leave a but comment. But I don't have any right now because I sold the last one. Okay, so this chosen life says D doesn't understand the setup. We are uh, exactly um, give us a little bit, maybe a week or two. We will find an encoding program that will work, and we'll be able to be up just like Brad and Tommy and yeah. and everybody. Hopefully. Right. Our, our part of our problem is that our connection is slow. Yes. We are through a landline, even though it is the wireless system. It is through a landline. Uh huh. Um, and so it's just they, they limit us at how much we can upload for video. Oh, and Big Bear, they have Merino, and they have a black Merino that they were going to talk about selling me some, and I am so excited about that. I love really, really clean, raw fiber. If it has a lot of hay in it, I can't use it so easily, but I love to spin from the lock mm -hmm. because you get a lot of texture in your yarn. Yes, so thanks, Big Bear. Um, Deep South is here. What are we showing up as? Did, did we already answer you, you that? You are one? showing up as Deep South Homestead. You uh -huh. guys are here in in the flesh, in the name. In the name. <laughs> um, so things that are going on right now here on the homestead are the greenhouse is vibrant and doing well. We have our woofer here. Her name is Kate. She's and awesome. she is amazing. Again, I'm not sure what she thinks of the permaculture situation because you don't have to do intensive weeding and, and things like that. But the first day she was here, we unloaded two tons of hay and got them set up in the backyard in the deep mulch and also in the row garden. Okay, so Crooked, what's it? Crooked Coop Homestead. Last week you said you like hay more than straw for your garden, and I'm wondering if you like hay or wood chips better. Hay. The wood chips still have an awful lot of carbon in them and not a lot of nitrogen. Like they're hundred like hundred percent carbon. With if you use alfalfa hay to mulch with, you have nitrogen in it because the alfalfa is nit is a nitrogen um, uh, sequestering and nitrogen producing plant. So it's like a it's like a green manure. And so when you mulch with hay all the nitrogen that's in the hay goes into your soil. So not only does it hold the moisture in, but it's actually fertilizing at the same time. And for me, we have some spots in our backyard where we add a lot of water when we're first starting plants off. We're at a point now where we can't water more than once a week because it's holding the water in well enough now that we just don't need to. And we're not having any problem with weeds. Right. Um, I love to plant comfrey next to anything that I'm planting that's going to need mulch because you go in and you cut the comfrey down, you lay it down, and it's your mulch right there in the spot. You don't have to go buy uh -huh. more mulch to do it. Um, as far as like a straw bale bed, a straw bale garden versus a hay garden, you do get a lot more weeds when you plant in hay bales, um, whereas with straw, what you have sprouting is wheat. Yes. Like you'll have a little bit of wheat sprouting in your garden. Exactly. Okay, April's Poppy Studio Time says that's the only thing holding Hubby and I back uh, is getting a mortgage. It looks From like. getting our own place. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's a big, it's a really big decision to make. Do you guys, you know, do, do you want that payment every month that just feels like it sucks your life from you because you have to work for it? Um, well, and, and 
the thing that we've gone and looked at is we've gone and looked at the little cabins, the little storage sheds, right. and one that was 20 by 40. Is that the last one that we looked at? 20 by 30. Well, no, it was 14 by 38, I think. And we decided we didn't want it 38. We wanted it at 32. Yeah. So 14 by 32. And, um, and, it, and, and sorry, one of the things that did come into play here is we have enough equity in this place that we would turn around and use it to pay cash for another set of land, you know, and have a paid off place. So it, it's just all the things that we, you know, get to try and weigh and come up to a decision with is. But if we built it ourselves, we would mm -hmm. save more than half mm -hmm. of, of what it cost to go and buy one of those. Because you could. You could buy go buy one of those little sheds. They make them super cute. They look like a cabin. You could refinish it yourself. Mm -hmm. And you could have a house for uh, like $15,000. Mm -hmm. And um, that's attractive to us because neither one of us have carpentry skills. Right. Um, and, and so it's a new thing that we can learn as well. So we could build it for ourselves for like seven thousand, or we could buy one of these little sheds and fix it up for about fifteen. And all we'd need to do is go find a place that was a small acreage. We would have to put in a well, yeah. obviously. Right. Um, okay, so April comes back. She says we have three near teens that we would need more space than that. That's yeah, true. Um, it it I have a actually my friend from college uh, is down in Salt Lake, and he's kind of battling with the same decisions he's got mortgages that he's um he has rentals. rentals and and everything and he's looking at and so he was talking about it and i said you know it, it really just comes to what are you willing to get rid of do you need any of this stuff do you or is it a want and is it enough of a want that you want to keep it and it's worth the sacrifice so yeah. so there's not a wrong answer here you know for me honestly the whole purpose of any of that would be i feel like our house is big enough and we have so much stuff that i'm constantly distracted by mess i'm constantly distracted by the need to keep things clean i hate clutter i hate feeling dirt under my feet in my carpets because we're on a farm we have to vacuum every single day in order to keep it from being really really gross mm -hmm. and so for me if we lived in a little house that had maybe wood floors and I had my kids in a smaller space without as many toys and without so many walls to draw on and ruin. Mm -hmm. Would I feel like I had more quality time with my family rather than feeling like what I'm interacting with in my life is a bunch of stuff? Mm -hmm. What did what did he say? What did Nicholas Which say? One? Nicholas, he's asking, uh, where do you recommend getting your greenhouse plastic from? Um, there's a lot of places online that you can get it. Just make sure that you do get actual greenhouse plastic and not um, the painter's plastic. Uh, when we built our first greenhouses, I just used painter's plastic. It lasted for the whole year. Um, it worked just fine, but if you have any kind of wind or something, it, it does make it brittle. And so when we did our wood greenhouse, I took lathe and put it along the outside on the windward side. And that's the side that the plastic lasted the longest. You really have to batten it down. And we've kind of done the same on our greenhouse right. that we have now that I went out and took furring strips right. and put it along every wood surface that the plastic might be beating against. Mm -hmm. And I just screwed it down and secured it so that when high winds come up, we're not um, breaking plastic. Right. Uh, let's see. Deep South Homestead says, try using your Ethernet cable. We do. We have it hardwired and we have wireless and we've actually even bridged the connection. It doesn't, it, it's the line between here and the tower yeah. or the company. So, uh, Truth or Tradition says, oh. my log cabin was less than that and I had no carpentry skills. Cool. Um, how much do you did have a you, video? Yeah, definitely. Can we watch your video? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, let us know how much you know, how much did you end up spending and uh, how big did you go with? Um, and and we you know, we've thought about just building one here on our property so that we had a place for woofers uh -huh. and maybe experiment with living in it ourselves and get renters for our house here. The only thing is I'm worried that some they would destroy our house. Yes. And also you can't really tell a family that's renting that their kids shouldn't go and and maraud on your rabbits. Right. It's not really cool. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. April. Uh, is the is growing season extended for you by using a greenhouse? We have very erratic seasons in Kansas. Yes. I started our garden in the greenhouse in February. And so our first harvest was April 1st. And then we had a huge harvest for the next uh, two months, mm -hmm. just up until now. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have a little bit of a bridge there because I was trying to wait for things to... I was trying to wait for things that might bolt, and so instead of pulling things up 
and 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 replanting a lot of greens instead I waited a little longer and I put in tomatoes and it takes a little longer for tomatoes so what what we did at that point was that I planted my row garden just at the same time that our production was peaking in the greenhouse so there hasn't we there's no transition as far as like greens we're pulling greens out of the front out of the row garden just as the greens are starting to die off in the greenhouse mm -hmm. um, and so they work really really well together I highly recommend it I was feeling sorry for us the other day because I'm like we don't get enough harvest we need to go somewhere with the longer season where things actually grow by right. May and then I thought about it, I'm like right. Really, the only thing that doesn't grow here by May is fruit, and so maybe I just need to plant some strawberries in the greenhouse. Good. And and by way of comparison, if we didn't have a greenhouse, the last frost date is June first, right? So uh, sometimes we can get it as late as the second week in June. Yeah. But we've had snow on the fourth of July. Yeah, it's the, like the usually people plant on like the eighteenth of May, and then they have to use row covers and mm -hmm. things like that to keep outside greens from freezing. Definitely. And I apologize, guys, for the clicking. I should have just put a mouse on the laptop here, but. And then, oh, and Carol Ann is doing her spindle. I love that. Who, I have a really great book on that. I wish I could think what it is. Um, you two can spin. On drop, uh huh? Oh. On on drop spindles. There's one lady out there that she has a, a small following on YouTube. It's not huge, but she grew up with. Um, Native American, she her, her parents were like missionaries or something to a Native American tribe that I think was to the Navajo, and so she learned how to spin with them as a child, and um, so she grew up spinning, and her book on, on using drop spindles is amazing, and she actually does production spinning on drop spindles, and um, they're, they're pretty neat little tools. I don't use them as much because my production spinning, if I... I have I, I like to be able to multitask and so using my spinning wheel while I'm sitting here doing research on YouTube is beneficial for me but I love I've made sweaters with drop spindles before and it's pretty fun let's see Kyle Wingate uh, seriously considering one of the Amish sheds mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of that's what we were, that looking, we're at. looking at uh, 14 by 40 yeah about the same size um, don't think they can get it to my place you know it was amazing what they could do um, did we oh, you're from Northern them, Idaho. Yeah. Did we want to give them a free plug? Old Hickory? Old Hickory. Our, old Hickory Sheds. Yeah, Old Hickory we Sheds is the one that's local to us. And they actually had, we have Palisades Reservoir. For those of you who were on Patreon, you saw it this week. Um, Palisades Reservoir, and it's just a canyon, and there's cabins that go up each side. And so he had <laughs> pictures where they actually got a skid steer to lift half of the cabin up off of the semi trailer over this hill and so this cabin is leaning this way on the trailer and the skid steer is holding it up as it goes up and over this hill it's and crazy. puts it back down on the other side of this trailer they can do some amazing things you know with a little in ingenuity and inventiveness yeah. it's hey cool. amerijam how how are, how are you doing we heard you're kind of going through a rough time yeah. sorry prayers We're coming praying out for you. Yeah, definitely uh, your baby's sure beautiful Right. Let's see. Or you could possibly be very good neighbors with to the Fouches. Yes, this is true. We are. Did <laughs> have you guys seen our our bench that, that uh, Nick made for us? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, it was Helios. Well, Helios knows. Yeah, it was Helios. Let's see. Old Hickory up here in Cordelaine as well. And yeah. they want twelve thousand to deliver it up to where you need it. I wonder if they can just build it in place instead. If that's easier. That could be, yeah, because they said that they could do. We that. love Coeur Of all the places we want to move, Coeur yeah. is at the yep. very is the very very Co top of Coeur d'Alene slash Lewiston, anywhere in that area. We don't like Lewiston because the paper mill smells yeah. so bad. Yeah, but hey, they got river. Oh, you guys have lake. Hey, water is good. What do you get in the craziest places, Doug? Is that cabins? Or? Yeah, probably the cabins. Is your cabin kind of a? Now his cabin. <laughs> You're We're not all like, a crazy wait a minute. <laughs> so, oh, let's see. People are still having a hard time finding the way here, including me. Thanks, Doc. Yeah. Yes, thanks for leaving yes. those links, guys. Thanks, guys. We really are doing our best. We're we're researching our butts off to try and figure out how right. everything works. And like I said, we really hope to have it in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll be up and hopefully up and going really quick. Oh, thank you. Um, so anybody that doesn't know what's going on with the marriage jam, um, he has a brand new baby and he just lost his wife 
and they're going through a really tough time, please go check out their channel. Um, he has some great videos up. Um, didn't I think your last video was the Moringa, planting the tree, um, and what you do with it. I think, uh, I don't think that'll grow in our area, but for those of you who would like to support them, make sure to go watch their videos. It sounds like um, Big Bear, Homestead, and and some of us other, our other channels are trying to get together a, a kind of like a raffle or a silent auction to see if we can help them out a little bit with bills. And you you are definitely in our prayers, and we love you guys. Um, let's see. Let's see. They can build it on site, but it is another ten percent. My actual place is south of here in Saint Marie. Saint Marie's, yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful areas, beautiful. yeah. My mom went to school up there, and she says, uh, what was the place that she said? She went to Moscow. She did. She went to Moscow, but there was another city there I told you about that we were looking at. It had kind of an interesting name, kind of a girl's name. It was on the canyon above Lewiston, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Ours is 20 by 20, not finished on outside, but only have $2,500. Oh, wow. is how much you spent You guys are going to do that for two and a half. Gee, that's Good job. Go for green living. That would be cool. And I'm still waiting for your wife to call me, or maybe I just haven't checked my phone enough, but we do need to set up that braid girls. Yeah, definitely. Um, we have that um, round robin talk about homesteaders versus preppers coming up. It, I think I'll be up on the 5th of July, and the week before we're going to have Go for Green Living's wife. So I guess she is part of Go for Green Living too, so she will come on, and we're going to try and do a braid girls on that, which I think will be just really fun. Hey, Groovy. Glad you like the channel. You are an earth child. We used to say that back in the 60s when someone wanted to live off the land. It's a passion for natural life and growth. Like you said, keep it lean and green. Okay, not mean. Right. Good job. Um, well, and I don't know if I don't really want to live off grid, honestly. I grew up off grid and um, I have some physical um, limitations. I Hauling water is not fun. Hauling water is not something that I can do on a regular basis and still be able to function. I have some. I have an autoimmune uh, disease disorder, whatever you want to call it, and I get really, really tired if I can't rest when I need to rest. Farming works really well for me because I can put out a lot of energy when I need to, and then I can take a lot of hours to rest from it so that I'm highly productive by being able to sit and knit when I'm really tired or going out and working when it's the cool of the day and it, so it balances out really well. Definitely. L. Ross says, Fred Meyer has containers for selling. Sale. They are reworking the store and the cargo containers. That oh, are going to well. is that like the big nice. semi-trailer containers? Where are you at, L. Roth? We would love to find out where uh, maybe to get some of these and because that would make a good cabin. That would be fun. Lots of people have done that. Let's see. So, Kelly Hudson, I may have missed it, but you have considered buying a used shed or barn. You got a 10 by 10 for 250 bucks. That's awesome. That is awesome. We have watched for them. Yes. In our area, kind of the off-grid living is, is kind of a big deal. And so when things do go up as being used, they're like slightly taken or, down and then you still yeah. have to pay to have them shipped and so we haven't found one that is yeah. or sheds in general just are really a hot item around here because everybody needs them to, to store stuff with so so we're, we're watching for it and we have a friend um, Dan and he's he's a friend of ours also has a, a YouTube channel but I don't think he's been on a lot lately um, but he is a carpenter, and he's offered to come and help us with ours. Um, but we don't know if it's really cost benefit. Would we want to sink all this money into a barn if we're not in a little cabin if we're not going to stay? Yeah. And if we decided we don't want to rent to somebody else, um, it kind of complicates. Where everything is just incredibly up in the air right now. Right. So. Um, Let's see. Oh, Mary Jane has to go. Um, well, thanks for stopping well, in. Yeah, and thank you. And you know, we like I said, we are praying. Our thoughts are with you. So let's see. Doc Kozlowski finally found us on Google Plus. Yes, can see the comment stream. Good, good. One seems DOA. Hmm. Um, I have two channels. Two channels. Explain. We're a little. Yeah, explain. Dirt Pet Time, we only have one channel, but maybe on Google Plus we have two. Maybe I created two on, yeah. on Google Plus. That's definitely yeah. a possibility. Or maybe Mr. Dirt's channel has gotten in the way. So. Uh, who was on last night? Not you guys. No, you Big guys Bear were on was Friday. On, no, Big Bear was on with uh, helping us out last night with the stream. No, I mean his show. He he had he's part of the Homestead Network. Oh, gotcha. Oh, oh, 
Let's see, Kyle got back. Uh, looks like Fred Meyer in Coeur d'Alene. So it looks like there is a Fred Meyer here in Coeur d'Alene. Yeah. So we're down in Idaho Falls. We also have a Fred Meyer here, but I, I, don't, I didn't know that they were cleaning it out. We could yeah. watch for that. Yeah, we'll check out. Um, so is it Deep South Homestead that was on last night? Um, I, I barely got in last night from being in Wyoming, so I, I haven't been on to check what everybody's doing. Right. Oh, and Wanda's on too. Yep. Separate Wanda, from you are in the right place. Um, okay. Franklin and Orchard. So that's where the Fred Meyer is in. In Boise. Yep. Gotcha. So I think okay, a whole so your wife's gonna so your wife's gonna text tomorrow and schedule a call time. That's awesome. Um, I have okay. So one thing that I'm finding that I'm struggling with right now is that I, I'm trying to settle set up. Okay, so we have the podcast that I'm uh, filming or recording on Tuesdays and Thursdays at night, and then I have Braid Girls on Friday mornings, and then I have the Homestead Network on Sunday nights, and it's starting to be really confusing to me who's in what time zone, and what I was supposed to talk to them about, and which day I was supposed to have set up with them. We just went and got a big wall calendar, but I'm still having a really hard time keeping track of it, and who was supposed to come on when. I have all these amazing people and other channels that I really want to give kind of some exposure to people, because they have these amazing skills. And right now, honestly, I really need an assistant. <laughs> That's one of the things we're kind of thinking of maybe putting out there as an actual video and saying, hey, guys, does anybody want to be Dirt Patch Heaven's assistant and help her with emails and stuff like that? And um, it would give me an opportunity to see if it takes the load off of me a little bit so that I can get better videos up and still keep the Etsy store up um, and that kind of thing. But the thing is... It, it, it takes a little bit of training, and I need somebody who can do a lot of research. And it would definitely build their channel because we would be doing collaborations with each other, and I'd be talking about them a lot. But um, I, it, I think it takes a special kind of person to be able to come in and run somebody else's business for them. And so I don't know how well it would work. For sure. So, I have a big whiteboard. Can yeah, you see my so whiteboard? Nicholas, I think he's being funny because it's right there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I don't even have everything on it. I, I can't seem to be able to keep track. I've got... I got so many lists up there, and now that we have woofers here, I'm having to like give them lists of things that need to be done. And I feel bad leaving them out working in the hot sun while I'm inside trying to get Etsy stuff done. It's all I need to be. I need to like. I need a brain transplant right now. Right. Let's see, Scott. <sighs> Scott, no off grid for me either. Thought my name was Get Wood until I was about seven. Yeah, I, I can relate with that actually. Do live in the <laughs> but have electric and liquid <laughs> propane. Yeah, that's one of the things we would definitely be. We would have firewood we would have probably propane and definitely have solar if we did move up in yeah. you know in the middle of the boonies yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <Let's see. sighs> we were on last night and had 129 in that's the awesome and did you that have any cool. glitching i i honestly i haven't been on the computer since i got home and so did you have glitching were you able to make it work did you use a google hangout yeah i'd really like to yeah, know the detail deep south homestead holla back so yeah uh, let's see and Nicholas and I had a really good visit last week. Uh, that's Nicholas Gomez. Yes. He is with our Patreon um, program, and he gets a, a personal interview once a month where we just kind of sit and visit. And he is, he's, he, his channel is family-oriented and also some fly tying and how to start a small uh, bait business. And you could, you could give yourself a shout-out, Nicholas, if you wanted to. Yeah. But it was really fun. Because he and I have been visiting for several months now about how he feels like he wanted to support our channel. And he's like, you need to get a Patreon up. So we got a Patreon up and help. He's a patron. And it's been really fun because we get to kind of meet face to face on the on the Hangouts, on our private Hangouts. And it's, it's kind of fun to see the people that have been commenting for so long and, and kind of rub shoulders a little more. Right. Talk to them face, you know, yeah. back and forth. Uh, Big Bear Homestead, do you know how to dye wool? Yes. I do. Yes, and everything, I don't know, can you see all the, can you, behind the head, the back big, here? The big toe. I can't, I, why can I not point? Move <laughs> well, your head, honey. <laughs> why, why can I not point at it? Huh? Without like here, actually. Let me show you, like that. Okay. There you go. See all the, all the These yarn up here? All... Those are all hand dyed. <sighs> yes, and it's not, it's not that complicated. If you want to know how to dye it professionally, go to Natalie at Namaste Farms because yes. she's amazing. And she taught me how to do it. Um, 
Let's see. Is there anything else? Propagating from cuttings. Did you guys want to know about propagating from cuttings? That's what we do with our willow fences and also with our cottonwoods. There's others. There's other trees that you can do that with, but our living fence is made from willow. Yes. Did Kate come back? No. She's not back yet? Okay. Yes. Hi, darling. Did you want to make an announcement? <laughs> come on in, Kaya. Hi. We've been upstairs getting dishes done yeah. so that we can get dinner ready. Our seasons are tornado furnace. Wait. Oh. Wait. Uh, freezing and sorry. <sighs> Tech supports kind of stop slacking. erasing conversation. I can't read it. Uh, has to be harder to grow most of the food one needs with a shorter growing season. That is yes. very true. And that's where the greenhouse became such a wonderful blessing here. And the first year, it was a huge amount of just feeling stupid and not being able to figure out. I I was so disappointed because we had no soil in it, and so I had to bring in those grow boxes that I do. And um, with those grow boxes, we were able to get at least some topsoil put in. And But it's why we, we grow and raise beds now with the straw bale and the hot beds is because we just don't have soil. So right. just because you don't have soil or you have poisonous soil doesn't mean you can't do a garden. It costs a little bit more, but you don't have the weeding and you don't have to do as much. Well, I wouldn't say you don't have to do as much watering. Right. Because it's you raised. You do have to water the hot bed. Because it's a going. raised bed, the, the, the air can get to it from all sides and can evaporate it very quickly. Whereas if it was in the ground, it would stay in the ground a little better. Um, Vinema says, Vinima. hello, glad to see Mr. Derp doing better. Thank you. If you guys notice, I fidget a lot. It's uh, my, my back still has about a 12-minute timer. And it's, you know, when it's ready, it's ready. So I'll just shift. Oh, and, and Doug, yes, they deliver those cabins to the craziest places. Oh, my gosh, it was so scary to see those pictures where they had, like, a crane holding this cabin over the side of a ravine trying to figure out. What? what? Did you want them to go somewhere? I just tell them to go play. Did you guys want to go play? You can stay in if Did you want Did you guys to. want to have them here? Well, they don't have mind. Usually they're house. excited to see them. Okay. Um, Let's, see. Let's so. see. Kelly, just now learning this live chat. Hello, guys. I use my sunroom to start my sprouts and, and New Year's. Oh, very nice. Very resourceful. That's what we do, too. We have a south-facing window. Uh -huh. Do you find, because this is what I find, I find I that know. after no. about the end of March, it's not as good in my window because instead of the sun being low on the horizon, it starts to be high on the horizon. We don't get as much sunlight. So the later in the year it gets, the less well my... Um, my seedlings do in my house and they start to do better out in the colder environment with, um, the, better with sun. the better sunlight. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, they are amazing people. We love you, South Homestead. Okay, so, oh, your Moringa was propagating from cuttings. Now, wasn't that the one that Brad from Big Family Homestead was also growing? Um, that was supposed to have like some really neat medicinal properties too. We're a family home, studying me, Kristen, and a living off grid. Um, right there. Off grid living. What? No, because I will fall off the ball. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if you want to sit on the black tree, you can. So, did you want to tell them how fun Kate is? But don't tell the last name. Right. Okay. So, Kate is a woofer that we're having over for nine days. And she plays, huh? Yeah. <laughs> when we're done and, working, that she comes in and she wants to yeah. color with the girls. Yeah. yeah. And it has been really, the girls have been accepted, uh, exceptionally happy about that mm -hmm. because, well, yeah, they can be a little intense sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And, and she doesn't shy away from them. Uh, let's see. Oh, Immune okay. issues are crazy. I have a white blood cell overdrive issue myself. Funny how foods and activity balance helps. Is that right. the truth? Um, this this loveliness that's on my face is that I went and ate the standard American diet. Not not really the standard American diet because I didn't eat sugar or wheat or flour of any kind, but just the difference between our homegrown meat and the meat, the processed meat and stuff like that that's out there. And my I'm I'm a little bit swollen and, and really achy. I don't feel very well. Um, so for me, it's it's not real fun to be off the farm for very long. So even if we do sell, we'd be just trying to go to a smaller version of what we're using now. Yeah. Chicago Homestead, this doesn't seem like a chat more of a question submission form. Yes, that is true. 
um, and it's not quite what we are looking for. So we are working on it, and hopefully in a couple weeks we'll have we'll be a little better fluid like it. With the well, and we do have some topics to follow through on, but right now it's some people finally got into the chat, so we kind of wanted to make sure and answer some questions. Definitely. Let's see. Helios is asking if we can sort by timestamp. Unfortunately, it I seems just de jumbled. It like yeah. pops in and, and new ones pop in all over the place and it's hard to tell where they are popping in yeah. from. Okay, what are woofers? So a woofer is a worldwide organization of farming organic farms. Earth, uh, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. Yeah. L lawns are dumb. Just nailed that. So I like you. lawns are dumb. Thank yeah. you. So what it is is that it is people are kind of like eco-tourists. They go from farm to farm, and the purpose of that is to learn how to farm and to see how different people are doing it. Like John Martin 48, he started out doing the woofer program, and he even had a wife and kid that he took from place to place to learn how to do these things. And the benefit of it is that if you think you want to farm, it means you learn different processes in different places, and you see, well, this was profitable in this place, but it wouldn't be profitable in this place. And what, what John Martin Fortier, who is the, um, the market gardener, he has a book out there, The Market Gardener. And what he did is he rented, first first he went like woofered, woofed, for um, I think eight years. And then he went and he rented for two years. And then he went and bought his farm. And he's making a, a, a very good living doing it and also has two like full-time assistants that help him. So that's not the common thing. A lot of times people jump into it with both feet. They get into a lot of debt. They don't really know what they were doing. They don't know how to sell. They don't know how to garden. And they think they're going to make a living off of it. And that's just not the case. Right. You have to know your soil. You have to know what, what you're going to plant. You have to know what your market is locally. If people will even buy from you. You can't just go to the Grand Canyon and say, well, I'm going to I'm going to plant in the rock here. And all the tourists are going to want to buy my spinach. <laughs> no, what they want is snow cones. Yeah. And so he was really good about his marketing uh, strategy to find the correct place to do it. So I think woofing is brilliant, and it's been it's really beneficial to the organic farmers because they get free labor, and 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 it's you know paying somebody ten twenty dollars an hour to come in and help you collect spinach that's going to sell for three dollars a pound. It's there's no way <laughs> there's no way to make a profit. There's, no way to break there's a reason there. that. Farmers are horribly in debt. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, how big, are we on time? Because Tommy's just about up. Yeah. Okay. So before we go on, everybody, when we get off of our show, please make sure to go check out Tommy at the Off Grid Nation. Yeah. And he likes to talk about patriotism and kind of current events and what's going on in the world and strategies for how to protect our country. So make sure to go check him out. So uh, real quick, Big Bear's asking, how's our daughter's foot? It's doing pretty good. Good. Turns out it, it two doctors thought it was broken and two doctors thought it wasn't. Right. All and so, in the same office. So so their conclusion and what they wanted to come up with was bring her back in a week and we'll x ray her again. They're like, We're not gonna and, x ray her again. And so it's it was hurting the whole week that it that I I was walking on it and cast and it is broken. We did go in for the x rays. But it was hurting, and so... And she's finally getting around a little more, and I have so... It was really... There for about four days, I was drowning <laughs> because I couldn't keep up with taking care of the rabbits and keep getting water out to the goats and keeping up on the Etsy, and I really fell behind on everything. And um, she is a little trooper, and Kaya really stepped up, and she's been helping and done a really, really good job. But my girls are such hard workers, and... Holy cow. They're, they're missed if they're MIA. Not well, and I mean, they're not missed because they're still here, but I <laughs> mean, you're still here, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I really, it made me really appreciate how hard they work for us. Definitely. So, but yeah. long story short, if it was broken, it was a hairline fracture. Um, I'm going to use my hand as Near a her foot. Toes. Yeah, right at her second toe um, in the foot bone. If it was there, it was so hard to see. Yeah. So. And she's had a boot. They gave her a boot. Yeah. Yeah, so... It boots what? <laughs> and again, remember, before us was Brad from Big Family Homestead, and so he and Krista had their live show. Make sure to go check them out. And we have a whole bunch of others that, let's see, we had uh, 
Big Bear Homestead. I don't remember. Are you Friday or Saturday? I thought I saw you Friday, but maybe your role of the show is on Saturday. And Deep South Homestead is on Saturday. And we're trying to get a big network of people with uh, homesteading skills together to be able to share this kind of nighttime watching to give people information rather than just the crap of, not that mm -hmm. Dancing with the Stars isn't great, you know? It's entertaining. I've never yeah. watched it myself, but I hear it's great. Yeah, I, I'd rather watch Deep South Homestead and Big Bear Homestead. For sure. So, let's see. April comes back. Ooh. My daughter cut the bejesus out of her foot. Spent ten yeah. days taking care of her. Oh yeah, and it's it's hard. And when one of the family goes down, it's just everybody ends up getting. Yeah. We had six months of that with me. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kyle, for putting that up. Definitely. I didn't even know we had a website there. So oh, thanks, the Kyle. You're awesome. Dot com Everybody, showtime. check out that link right there. Well, I'm, <laughs> yeah, we try really hard to collaborate back and forth to make sure we do that kind of thing. And and honestly, I'm so far behind. Right. I'm and we can't of, leave for a day. I really yeah. can't. I'm kind of pulling my foot off because it's starting to get a little, a little sore. Okay, so you are on Friday. Okay, so that's what I thought it was. Um, that was Big Bear. And since we're giving out websites, woof.net, W-W-O-O-F.net. Yeah how to get to there and you have to put up the profile for your farm uh -huh. it's really really straightforward and then you give a donation that says thanks for being there thanks for doing what you're doing I think I gave a $15 donation for, for, for the fact that they're willing to do this you don't get charged to have a woofer come to your place um, and, they, and they do it because they just really believe in what they're doing um, oh here's a good one so L Roth comes back what do you I what do I use to clean alpaca wool um, with alpaca, what you want is a tumbler. It's like a big wire cage that has a, a handle that allows you to turn it. And alpaca has a tendency to be very dusty rather than have a lot of knots in it. If you have a lot of knots in it and, it, and it, it's, it's stuck together, you might just want to use it as like mulch or something. Um, if it doesn't have a lot of alfalfa in it, if it's relatively clean except for the dust, you can put it like on a sheet and have somebody else hold the other end. and bounce it up in the air so that you get the dust out. Me, I don't I don't clean it before I spin it. Um, I just spin it with the dust on it and then once I'm ready for it to be sent off, I will soak it in a couple changes of cool water to get all the dust out of it. But that is usually what you use for alpaca is a tumbler. Okay, so Doc comes back. He says there's Dirt Patch Heaven and Dirt Patch Heaven Homestead. I believe that we do have two channels because there was two email addresses. Were there? I think so. Okay, so we need so, to see if we can figure out how to close that yeah, one. Yeah, and I know how, I think I know how because I had to do that with Mr. Dirt. So, okay, so uh, thank you, Doc. We'll look into that. But we need that. to get off because it's yes. time for time to start. So go well, check out Tommy. Minute. And um, I guess another – oh, shoot. There we go. Okay, so we'll end on a couple notes. Nicholas comes back says, great times. You guys give good stuff. Well, thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> and – to all of you fathers out there, happy Father's Day. It has, yeah, you know, give me a kiss. Right? Thanks. <laughs> so, um, happy Father's Day. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate you all, and um, you know, have a wonderful week. And we love you, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Make sure to go check out Tommy. Yes. Off-Grid Off Nation. Nation. <laughs> Bye.